What is going on Zone Nation? Ozone here coming at you with another YouTube video and this is going to be the top 5 zombie facts that you probably didn't know. Now they are really lengthy so I'm going to be cutting them into parts because there's top 5 so I might do 1 then 2 and 3 and 4 and 5. I'm not sure but without further ado let's get started. Number 1. The inspiration behind the golden spork and the symbolism of the steps it takes to get the golden spork and what it symbolizes in real life escaping Alcatraz. I saw the first step of acquiring the golden spork while doing the easter eggs. So first of all you have to throw the tomahawk or the hell's retriever at this poster right here and obviously we all know what to do with that. It reveals a hole in the back of the jail cell. Now this is a reference of how real life people who escaped Alcatraz, this is a reference of how they escaped by taking spoons and digging holes in the back of their walls. Each night after checkups they would go in the back and dig the hole then cover it up with a fake grate. The spoon is representing the golden spork. They use the spoons to escape. Step number two for acquiring the golden spork is you have to come back here and you have to shock the spoon right there. Now there is a specific reason for why they left the spoon there. First, the people in real life Alcatraz would dig holes in the back of their cell and then go in the back and climb up to the roof by climbing up using these pipes. Before they climbed up to the roof, they left their spoons on the ground so that is the reason why the spoons are left there. Now if you guys look next to the spoon, there is a piece of cloth and a hole. This symbolizes the people in real life Alcatraz, but they built a raft out of their cloth or their clothing and also raincoats. So they would climb up through the roof with their clothing, which they came through the holes they dug with their spoons, so that could be what that piece of cloth symbolizes. So now if we look back, there is also a skull not too far away from the cloth or the spoon. So if you guys don't know the real life people who tried to escape Alcatraz, their names were Franklin Morris, John Anglin, and his brother Clarence Anglin. There was also their friend Alan West who tried to escape with them. Now only three people escaped. Franklin, John, and Clarence were the only ones to escape. Now their friend Alan was left behind. Now apparently he ended up dying at the prison, so this is the skull which could represent him. So the reason why Alan was left behind was because when he began digging through the wall with his spoon he noticed that there was a metal bar behind the wall so he wasn't able to dig through. He didn't die at Alcatraz, he died at Shan's Teaching Hospital of Acute Peritonitis. Now when Morris and the Anglin brothers successfully crawled through the hole they actually climbed through the ventilation shaft and the guards ignored the loud noises they made. Before escaping through they created dummy heads to fool the guards that night they escaped using soap, toilet paper, and real hair which the skull could represent Alan's death. So the next step for acquiring the golden spork is the diner's spoon. So you have to go in the cafeteria in the back and throw your tomahawk at the spoon. Now this represents how they gathered their spoons and escaped in Alcatraz. So they stole the spoons from the cafeteria, right? So we found the two stories regarding two spoons. Now what about the third spoon? You can find the third spoon in the shower steering the blood. So John Anglin had the whole spoon digging and escaping idea. So John Anglin used to work in the showers. Now for when he worked in the showers, he had access to a bunch of supplies such as cloth and raincoats. So when you pick up the last spoon, his hand rises from the blood and he's also in the showers. This represents his idea of a spoon escape in the golden spork. The system in Alcatraz worked by every two weeks everyone can shower once. So John Anglin was able to get one shower every two weeks. This can represent the last step where you have to stay in the shower rooms and kill zombies for two rounds. Now they coincide with each other by two and two. But some may think, then why is a spoon our weapon? A spoon is our weapon because they ain't in the cafeteria. Now this place was the most dangerous place in all Alcatraz. This was also dangerous was because the prisoners had no shackles so they can eat. They would eat with a spoon and a fork, therefore the spork. So what about the golden part? It's a weapon because they were made of metal and the prisoners would steal them and kill the guards with them. Therefore there was more guards with guns in that area than any other part of Alcatraz. Now it's golden because it's also represented the key way out. Now the real life key to Alcatraz was golden so that's why it's called the golden spork. Also since the cafeteria was the most dangerous part of Alcatraz, there were more traps on the ceiling, which in Mob of the Dead, there is an acid trap on the ceiling in the cafeteria. Number 2. Where are we going secret code? Now we all know the song Where Are We Going and to get that song you have to go to the code machine in the afterlife and type 935. The guy who created this song his name was Kevin Sherwood. Treyarch helped him with the song lyrics during this process so it matches up with the storyline. Now he posted the lyrics to the song on his YouTube channel and since Treyarch is known for easter eggs they left one in the ending part of the song. At this part no music is playing and nothing is on the screen. It is blank and all you see are these codes that pop up on the screen. 
game. Cameron Sherwood eventually released the code reader to decipher the code. The code decipher says, let go and the beginning will become the end. Now in Origins, it says the trailer, every story has a beginning and an end. But why would they say that if Origins is the beginning of the story? So why would they talk about the ending and the beginning if the beginning was the end? Now at the ending or the beginning of Origins, we find out it was the end of Zombies that we were going to be playing. Out of the kids' imagination and not as the dolls, so we were going to be in a different phase of Zombies. So the kids' imagination we were playing as is Phase 1, now the end of Phase 1 ended at the end of Origins because it showed us zooming out of the kids' imagination, now it zooms out into phase two, out of the imagination, and into the real world, which this would be the next zombie game, Black Ops 3. So the beginning is the end of zombies, or phase one of zombies. Let go, and the beginning will become the end. Origins, which is the beginning, ended Origins, with a cutscene at the end. So it ended the kids' imagination phase, aka phase one, but is also the beginning at the same time. The beginning which is Origins is the end. Let go and the beginning will become the end. That was crazy, right? A lot to take in. Just rewatch it and you'll understand. So the idea of the end being the beginning and the beginning being the end is the whole idea of the infinite cycle in zombies. Just as how the zombies maps and storyline are an infinite loop and an infinite timeline. So this is the clock above the cafeteria. So the clock begins at 6.45 and it ends at 8.15. Now once it's at the beginning and goes around to the ending time, it repeats itself and it goes back to the beginning again, the infinite cycle. So that was 1 and 2. Stay tuned for 3, 4, and 5. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and see you guys in the next video. Peace out, Zonation.